1924, we were uh, rolling carbon and mild steel in, in small quantities to specific tight tolerances, such as were later required in stainless steels. Now, with stainless steel coming into the picture, more than ever, people required experimental runs of small quantities of stainless steel called 188, which was developed from the old KA2 German days. We were the only firm in the country that would take us an order for a small quantity of stainless steel. In 1924, my father, Fred Albrecht Sr., started Albrecht. My father was a product of Wallingford, Connecticut. He was born, raised, and educated here. And after graduating from high school, he went to one of the three major industries in town, which was a knife, fork, and spoon, and hollowware manufacturer named R. Wallace and Sons. He worked there for five years, both on the inside and the outside, on the sales desk. He found that his uh, employment opportunities were limited, so he decided, like many others, to go west and seek his fortune. Well, he and another fella pooled their resources, bought a car, and went west, and worked in a variety of jobs on the way going west. They eventually ended up in Pennsylvania, and they worked in the Donora Works of U.S. Steel. My father's job was as a scrap inspector for one year at the Donora Works in Pennsylvania. Now, he knew that there was no place here in Wallingford and in this area on how to inspect scrap. So he decided to come back to Wallingford and start a scrapyard. And that's how our company originally started as a scrapyard. During the Great Depression, uh, we had piles of scrap, but no money, and my father decided to make knives, forks, and spoons. The Merton Wallingford area was second only to Sheffield, England in the manufacture of cutlery. So it's natural that he went into this business also. What happened when the Second World War came along was that the government decided that Albrecht, namely himself, would make the Army mess kit knife. But since the rating for this particular product wasn't as high as, for example, ammunition, he couldn't get the exact thickness and width that he needed. But he knew these people in the steel mills because he had been supplying them scrap for years. And they said, well, we'll supply a thicker material or wider material, but you're going to have to convert it to the correct thickness and width that you want so you can make your product. That was the beginning of our re-rolled company during the Second World War. Well, after the war and after, after having gone through making more knives, forks, and spoons, he decided to sell the knife, fork, and spoon company, eliminate the 24 or so scrap companies, uh, scrap customers that he had, right? and with the proceeds, buy a quality mill so that we could become a precision re-roller. Up to this point, we weren't really a precision re-roller. And he bought the third Zenzimer mill ever made for rolling stainless steel. And that was a precision rolling mill. And he placed the purchase order in 1955. And we received the mill in 1956. And on the mill, there's a, uh, a decal that says T. Zenzimer. 1956. That's the date that we became a quality precision re-roll strip mill. In the course of time we added to our stainless steel base we added nickel base alloys, cobalt base alloys, titanium and titanium alloys. In the late 50s and the, and the early 60s Having Pratt Whitney in this area making jet engines and supplying material, small quantities of material to customers, some of whom were selling the material to Pratt Whitney. Pratt Whitney decided that they better have an audit done on our company. They allocated two engineers on a part-time basis to go through our company and determine what we had to do as far as systems go for traceability of material, as far as training goes of our people, 
And as far as our laboratory equipment goes, what we had to buy in, in order to pass their audit. And that cost a fortune for us, which we didn't have, but we did it. My father did it, he borrowed the money, he went out and did what he had to do in order to become qualified by Pratt Whitney. We, right from the beginning, became a high-tech reroll operation. Thanks to Pratt Whitney, we were now supplying material to Boeing and Roar, North American Aviation, and General Electric, and many, many other customers, including the automobile first tier and second tier suppliers. In the late 50s and early 60s, we were instrumental in the forerunner of the space shuttle and obta obtaining and ro rolling materials, some of which had never been rolled foil gauges before. Right, we were instrumental in the forerunner of the B-1 bomber. What I'm getting at is that Albrecht has always been in the forefront, the forefront of technological requirements. Our objective is to supply the needs of the customers. The objective of our reroll mill is to make the highest quality material, the more difficult the product, the better. And that's where we truly excel. That is a story that my father never believed could ever happen. He started a company, he had no idea that we were going to become a quality supplier to the finest manufacturers in the world.